Okay, then I think we are one minute past uh, 10. Uh, first of all, welcome very much to this uh, webinar called uh, Fishing Fleet Optimizing Propulsion Efficiency. My name is uh, Trond Paulsen. I'll be the host for this uh, webinar here today. Uh, my position in uh, Kongsberg uh, Maritime is that I'm responsible for propulsion and engine sales within the segment that we call fishery and special purpose uh, vessels. This is uh, considering of all various fishing vessels, trawlers, perseiners, uh, including aquaculture with live fish carriers and forage carriers. Uh, what we call special purpose is typically uh, advanced research uh, vessels with uh, high demand for either noise emissions or uh, uh, pollution or high ice class and, uh, and special uh, projects. The webinar today uh, is planned to be in uh, three parts uh, with three different uh, speakers. Uh, you have the option of uh, using the Q&A dialog box to come with the comments uh, or questions under ways. Uh, I, uh, we have put off some time at the end uh, for answering some questions, but uh, if we don't have the time for everything, then we will come back on an email to uh, those of you that we are not able to, uh, to answer. The same will be if the questions are too technically difficult for me to answer, then we might have to, to wait a little bit. First out of the speakers today will be uh, Leif Wartal. He's uh, one of our very smart uh, hydrodynamic uh, people. He will talk uh, about uh, the need to look at uh, the whole propulsion system as a, as a system rather than single components with engine, gearbox and, uh, and propeller. After that, uh, Isak Stamnes from uh, Rolls-Royce Bergen Engine will talk about uh, the development process of uh, the B33 engine and the various steps that was taken there to uh, reduce uh, fuel consumption without the use of uh, common rail technology. In the end, Dag Brandal uh, will talk about uh, how the development of uh, PM technology has been in, uh, in Kongsberg uh, Maritime. And he asked the question why this technology or if this technology will be utilized in the fishing fleet moving forward, as we have not seen too much of it today. Uh, as a small uh, introduction to uh, and putting everything into uh, to context a little bit, uh, I want to show you where on a typical advanced fishing vessel you will find the uh, Kongsberg uh, equipment. After the acquisition of Rolls-Royce Commercial uh, Marine last year and a successful integration, we have uh, broadened our uh, scope for a fishing vessel quite a lot. Uh, in addition to what will be the focus today, which is the propulsion system with uh, yeah, steering gears, rudders, nozzle, uh, gearboxes and engines and all that, you will find Kongsberg equipment from the very bottom of the vessel to the very top of the, of the vessel, as this picture indicates. Under the waterline, you will see a lot of uh, Kongsberg Simrad uh, equipment, uh, sonars, echo sounders, catch monitoring, cameras, systems. On the deck, you will find a lot of uh, various deck uh, handling uh, machinery, um, troll winches and other advanced uh, deck handling, both as electrical and as hydraulic uh, packages. On the bridge, you can find fully integrated uh, bridge systems uh, with everything from uh, Kongsberg, including navigation, radar control, automation, thruster control. And on the top of the mast, we also have uh, even the cloud solutions and ship to shore communication with our uh, vessel insight concept and also remote services where you can connect to the various Kongsberg uh, equipment on board and do remote diagnostics and, uh, and help finding. Kongsberg, of course, strive to be uh, world class and competitive on all these single uh, products and offer them to various uh, yards and, uh, and ship designers and also our expertise surrounding this uh, product when that is, uh, is needed. But we also offer fully uh, integrated solution with full electrical uh, packages, switchboards, drives, motors, connecting all of this equipment uh, together. And Kongsberg also have a separate uh, division or separate people that are working with full uh, ship design. 
uh, with full uh, solutions from uh, based on the old uh, NVC and UTE design in, in Rolls-Royce. But I think that was maybe enough of an introduction and where we are today. I guess most of you have uh, logged on to, to learn something. So I think I will then just hand over the word to the first of our uh, experts. Uh, Mr. Leif uh, Vartal, will you please take over control and uh, guide us through your part of the presentation. If I can get the technology to work and there. And the technology might be a little bit difficult. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, hello everybody. <clears throat> and um, thank you for the introduction, Trond. I noticed that you mentioned I was most. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I'm Leif Ortol and I'm section manager of hydrodynamics. Um, <clears throat> I'm leading a research and consultancy uh, group uh, um, and we are based in uh, Ulsteinvik, Norway. So in this <clears throat> presentation, I will uh, go through the Pruma system with the Inoduct, which I'll come back to in a few seconds. <clears throat> uh, then I will talk about how we optimize the diameter and shaft revolution speed of a propeller with inoduct and how this optimization is related to uh, specifically to a, a, a trawler uh, operating in different operation modes. And finally, <clears throat> uh, I will talk about the importance of considering the main engine and the propulsion system as a system. Um, and um, for the overall optimization and reduction of uh, or minimization of uh, fuel consumption. In this regard, I will show an, uh, an example from real in-service data, <clears throat> uh, which is useful for to understand the operating condition of a trawler and see how the overall performance uh, is uh, on, on a real uh, trawler modern trawler. Okay, so um, let me see if we get the next slide. Yeah, uh, brief about the PROMOS. So PROMOS is in short for propulsion and maneuvering system. And uh, this concept was developed around 15 years ago um, <clears throat> and have been delivered to several ships uh, since then and was first uh, developed for an open propeller, as you can see on this picture. Uh, so brief about the different elements of, uh, <clears throat> of the Prumas. Um, that's to the left, lower left, you can see the Costa bulb. And the Costa bulb is named after the uh, inventor, Dr. Leo Costa, and he uh, discovered that you could increase the efficiency by introducing a torpedo-shaped uh, bulb in the center of the rudder. Um, so that's an old invention, uh, which is, have been adapted into the PROMOS. In the middle, <coughs> uh, you can see a picture of a twisted rudder. So the rudder profile is twisted above and below the uh, propeller shaft. So it's adapted to the slipstream of the propeller. So that's an, uh, an, an Another important element in, 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 in this concept, which is also uh, crucial for uh, minimizing uh, cavitation on the rudder. And finally, there is a hub cap. This is the silver colored uh, cap, which you can see uh, here. Uh, this is rotating on the, uh, the, the propeller shaft and uh, it constitutes a streamlined fairing uh, between the, uh, the hub and the Costa bulb, which then minimize the rotational losses uh, from the hub vortices. Um, so um, the PROMOS have demonstrated 
significant efficiency improvement. Um, so increase in propulsive efficiency means reduction in, in fuel burn and load on the engine. Uh, typical figures are 3 to 6% for single screw and 2 to 5% for uh, twin screw. Um, in addition, uh, we have noticed or learned that the pressure pulses can be reduced when we have the Proma system with a tailor made uh, propeller for the uh, aft ship and inflow. So, pr reduced pressure pulses means increased comfort. So that's very important for the ship owner. And finally, the twisted rudder um, have also demonstrated an increase in uh, maneuver uh, maneuverability or increased side force, in, particularly in the low speed uh, maneuvering mode. And then, uh, some years later on, <coughs> uh, we developed uh, efficient nozzle uh, called Inoduct, and uh, which then was integrated into the PROMOS. Uh, the development of the Inoduct started with the knowledge gained, designed in the nozzle and closed the ring propeller on the permanent magnet arsenal thruster, which you can see uh, on the upper left uh, corner of this uh, slide. Uh, and you will hear more about the permanent magnet arsenal thruster in, in the last presentation today. So we were inspired by the improvement we saw uh, by twisting and tweaking the, uh, the design of, of the, uh, the nozzle on, on the, uh, the arsenal thruster, which then this, use, uh, this knowledge were then used uh, into the Inoduct. And finally then integrated into the, the PROMO system. So from that experience, we have seen that um, we can gain uh, power savings uh, up to 18%, which is very much. And of course, um, means a lot on, on, on the, uh, the fuels, fuel consumption cost. Uh, for, trawler, uh, for trawlers, the, the boiler pool is important, of course, and uh, we have seen typical uh, improvements between two to uh, six percent. And uh, the Prumas rudder with the flap provide also very good steering performance. And that is important when you shall turn the trawler and the vessel up against strong winds and, and currents. Um, the Promos have, with Inoduct have been sold to about 35 ships in the fishery segment during the recent years. And in the offshore boom, seven years ago, also delivered to some anchor handler techs. Uh, to maximize propulsive efficiency and reduce fuel consumption, it is also important to consider how the PROMOS is integrated to the hull, or how the hull is adapted to the PROMOS and Indodect. Because uh, the system, the propulsion system and the hull interact with, it, with each other, and that is also important for the overall uh, efficiency. So this colorful picture shows the pressure dis distribution on the aft part of the hull and the PROMAS without the propeller. Uh, for an experienced and trained eye, this type of pressure plot give, about, give info about potential for reducing energy losses in the flow by reshaping details with regard to how the nozzle and rudder is integrated to the hull. Um, so you can easily um, gain one or two percent by looking carefully into the details uh, of the flow induced pressure. And of course the shape of the hull is crucially uh, important for the wake or the inflow to the propeller and nozzle because the inflow is important for the overall performance and also with regard to 
the cavitation performance. <clears throat> Selecting the optimum dimension of the propeller and nozzle in combination with RPM is an important evaluation in the early stage of a project. Uh, the gold rule says that large and slow rotating propeller is most efficient in converting power into thrust. But this is true when considered the propeller in isolation. A too large propeller can lead to a reduced hull efficiency and if the propeller comes close to the sea surface when operating in waves, the nozzle propeller can take air, which then leads to power fluctuations and loss of thrust. Uh, the operation profile is important for uh, in this regard. And what is the time in transit versus trawling? That's important. Uh, what's the time spent uh, trawling a double trawl versus a single trawl? Uh, that, of course, uh, um, influence on, on, on the, the pulling or, or trust demand. And uh, operating, operation time related to production, shooting, hauling, etc. So we can assist in finding the optimum uh, diameter and RPM based on theoretical computation and experience in design and delivering on this type of of, of system to several trawlers in the past years. And finally, it is important to consider the operation characteristics of the engine, the generator and the gear, and how those components uh, interact with the propulsion system. And that brings me over to the next slide. Uh, a key word with regard to overall performance is interactions. Uh, this slide or this picture show the different equipment we can deliver from Kongsberg. It consists of the engine, the gear, uh, shaft generator, <coughs> uh, and um, the, the promos with nozzle. Uh, the shaft generator and gear is coupled such that the power can be transferred to internal power consumers. And there is also a PTI or power take-in, which makes it possible to boost additional power to the propeller from auxiliary ma machinery when that is required. An important goal for the ship owner is to convert, convert fuel into useful energy as efficient as possible. And this is, of course, important for the fuel consumption and the emission of exhaust gases. To minimize fuel burn, it's important to understand the power demand in the different conditions and to consider the interactions between the engine, the shaft generator, and the propeller. Interactions, in this case, means that the engine influence on the propeller and the propeller influence on the engine, in addition to the shaft generator and the gear, which are, are between the two. Or in other words, the size and performance of the different components in the system should not be selected in isolation. <clears throat> uh, the propulsion control is a key element with regard to the overall system optimization. Uh, and the combined pitch RPM control or the combinatory control is particularly important for the overall energy efficiency of a trawler. We can say that the controls, the propulsion and engine controls are gluing the, um, the propeller and engine and shaft generator together in an optimum way. So this slide shows how the engine performance diagram for the B3345 and the engine to the left and what we call a BPN diagram or propulsion performance diagram to the right. Uh, I will not go into all the details and content of this diagram, but just mention that the shaft speed of the engine and the propeller is on the horizontal axis on both diagrams. 
and the power is on the vertical axis. Okay, something happened here. Uh, we have some problems with the uh, with the back and forth, but just uh, let me know which slide you want to be uh, on uh, later. Uh, the pre the previous one. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> so as I said, the uh, this is the engine performance diagram. Um, uh, engine speed on the horizontal axis and uh, shaft speed on propeller on, on the uh, horizontal axis on the diagram to the right. And we have the power in as the vertical axis. And uh, the aim is to operate the engine and the propeller so they are both efficiency or both efficient at the same time under different conditions. So note here the load limit of the engine and the isofuel consumption curves. Um, they tend to, uh, to be, uh, or the lowest uh, specific fuel consumption tend to be close to the load limit um, on, on the left hand side here. Uh, this diagram, which is the propeller performance diagram and this example is showing the power versus the tow rope pull for a trawling condition under four knots. Um, so the blue curves here are showing the tow road pull so there's 200, 300, 400 and 500 kilonewton and that corresponds to a certain power for this particular uh, propeller and hull. Uh, so we are mapping the overload limit from the engine onto this diagram. And when we are designing the combinator, we need to make um, uh, or reserve power for the internal consumers. So that means the, the propeller uh, overload limit is uh, this green curve. And then we can find the optimum combination of pitch and RPM during variable tow load uh, by setting up the combinator. So here, here are an example of real operational data. Um, the map to the left is showing a trawler, the track of a trawler, uh, which is uh, have been operating in the Norwegian Sea and even up to the Barents Sea. Um, when this uh, uh, track is colored yellow, uh, the, the trawler is in, in, um, in free rimming mode in say 12 to 40 knots. And when in blue, it's down in, in trawling speed, four to five knots typically. Um, and the, uh, the two other diagrams is the showing the intensity plot of, uh, of the um, real operational data. So in our data acquisition system, um, ship intelligence system, we can extract data from this system and visualize as is done here. So the blue uh, cloud here indicate where the, uh, the engine have been uh, running in free running mode, that's the diagram to the left in the, in the middle, and then for trawling mode. So, so these ty this type of information is very important to check real data against theoretical predictions and simulations. And so we can learn a lot of, uh, of this type of data. So it's an excellent basis for possible adjustments and improvements. Um, when we are setting up uh, new control systems. And if there are operational issues, we can also extract data from this, uh, this system uh, to, uh, to troubleshoot. And in this case, we see that the, uh, the blue clouds are uh, fitting nicely into the area which was intended in order to minimize the fuel consumption, both for free running and, and, and trawling. 
So um, that ends my presentation. Okay, um, then I will take over. Thank you, Leif. Um, my name is Isak Stamnes. I uh, am uh, I'm the head of department for engine process performance and emissions here at Bergen Engines. Um, I'm situated at our uh, factory facilities here uh, in Bergen, Norway. I will take you through some um, talk some some about uh, how we optimize fuel consumption on uh, on our uh, engines. So. Um, yeah, first of all, here down on the right, you see an uh, exploded view of an uh, inline um, six cylinder uh, B3345 engine. It's, um, as you see, it's uh, highly modulized uh, for ease of production and also uh, easy maintenance. So, um, and um, in terms of technology, we have, uh, we have made a very conscious um, choice during the design phase uh, of the engine platform that we we keep it as uh, simple as possible while still maintaining um, uh, good performance. So um, uh, we have uh, consciously not introduced uh, new technologies such as common rail and two-stage uh, turbocharging uh, because of uh, reliability. Um, and uh, we have uh, rather uh, chosen to uh, to stretch uh, the boundaries of existing technologies uh, in order to uh, achieve uh, uh, good performance so um, and um, the areas what where we focus and uh, performance optimizations are mainly it's a turbocharging optimization um, the turbocharger is a very important part um, of the combustion system and um, we uh, specify our turbochargers uh, for running, uh, so the engine can run on high loads, continuously on high loads on the reduced speed. So, um, and reducing the speed of the engine will reduce the friction losses in the engine and thereby increase uh, fuel efficiency. Uh, we also uh, do a lot of combustion optimization um, on the one part that is uh, finding the optimum setup of, uh, of the fuel injection system. So um, pump specification, pipe, and then um, uh, nozzle, uh, fuel injection valve and fuel injection nozzle um, system. So as I said, this engine has uh, not common rail. It has a conventional fuel injection system, fully mechanical uh, hydraulical system. So um, for um, for uh, good reliability and still high performance. Also uh, on combustion, we uh, we use uh, what is called the Miller cycle, and um, I'll come more into the details on that uh, in a minute. But uh, um, that gives us uh, the opportunity to optimize, to lower NOx emissions, and uh, and then increase uh, efficiency. Um, we also have um, variable valve timing on this engine. Um, it's uh, that's something we need uh, to uh, to maintain good uh, operation on part load when we use uh, this Miller cycle uh, valve timing. So um, yeah, first of all, turbocharger optimization. Um, as I said, we we. Uh, optimize or, or and specify our engines so that you could run continuously uh, on high loads where, uh, here on, on part load and part um, part uh, speed, reduce speed. You can run high loads above the propeller curve um, here. And uh, as I said, when you, when you reduce speed, uh, you reduce friction losses and um, you, uh, um, you increase efficiency. So um, that means um, it uh, tends to get very hot for engine in these areas um, and therefore uh, correctly specified uh, turbochargers is, uh, uh, is necessary and um, we rely on our uh, turbocharger suppliers to, 
to uh, give us a state of the art um, uh, turbocharger technology. So uh, further we, um, we optimize um, the fuel injection equipment. Uh, here you see a fuel injection valve with the fuel injection nozzle here on, on, uh, on the bottom or of the valve and then uh, the, just uh, the fuel injection nozzle here uh, in itself. So um, um, th th this is the, the nozzle is the main part of um, of the parameter variation. So uh, and we, uh, we what we vary is uh, the nozzle bore length. That is the, um, the uh, material thickness here in the nozzle uh, bottom of the nozzle here. Um, we also vary the bore diameter uh, of the, um, the nozzle bores that will have an influence on the, um, the droplet size uh, uh, of the injected fuel and thereby also in, uh, impacting uh, NOx emissions and uh, uh, fuel efficiency and the whole, um, the whole combustion process. We, uh, we experiment with various uh, bore angles. So that is the angle in which the, um, the fuel is sprayed into the cylinder. So either a steep angle or, or a more flat angle uh, in terms of uh, a nozzle um, bore angle. And also the number of bores um, uh, we experiment with. So um, there are a number of parameters um, and a number of different values for all these parameters. And uh, um, we spend uh, quite a lot of time in uh, the laboratory on our, um, our uh, inline six uh, cylinder uh, uh, laboratory engine. Uh, where we uh, run a lot of tests and uh, we evaluate and we find the optimum uh, setup for, for the fuel injection system. Um, also, uh, as part of the combustion system here is important the, the piston valve bowl uh, geometry. Uh, it's important for, um, for the interaction for uh, fuel efficiency, NOx emissions and smoke opa uh, opacity. So um, uh, some uh, on the Miller cycle, uh, that's part of the combustion optimization in terms of uh, lowering the combustion temperature, uh, increasing uh, the thermodynamic uh, efficiency and uh, keeping uh, NOx emissions uh, down. So the Miller cycle is basically, uh, uh, you. Uh, uh, one slide back, please. Yeah, yeah. you basically close the uh, air inlet valve earlier than uh, the non-conventional timing. So you can imagine the two pistons here. So uh, rather than keeping the valve open uh, down towards bottom dead center and uh, usually uh, past bottom dead center, we close uh, significantly before uh, bottom dead center. So um, what you do then is uh, you, uh, you shorten the time of air induction, and um, you also reduce the the compression of the piston when you uh, go uh, into the compression stroke, and that reduction of uh, of um, induction uh, time and uh, compression by the piston you have to compensate by uh, putting uh, that work on the turbocharger. So you need a higher boost pressure, uh, and you need good turbocharging. So um, um, but the, that will have its advantages. Um, the one is that uh, the turbocharger then uses uh, otherwise wasted heat in the exhaust to compress the air. So you gain uh, overall system efficiency there. And you also have the advantage that you get cooler air into the cylinder um, because the turbocharger uh, sends, compresses the air, sends it through here, as you see in the background here, the charger cooler and then uh, into the cylinder. So on top here, when you then inject your fuel, you have a cooler uh, air mixture and you cool down the whole uh, process and thereby reducing NOx emissions. And when NOx emissions are lower, you could, um, uh, you could uh, advance your ignition or injection timing and then uh, have better fuel efficiency. So, um, and 
um, the flip side of uh, Miller timing is though that you are very reliant on um, on turbocharging uh, uh, boost pressure and on part loads lower loads uh, you don't have that much energy in uh, in the exhaust for the turbocharger to uh, to pump up the pressure so uh, on lower loads uh, we need to switch the inlet valve timing to uh, more conventional valve timing so we uh, we close uh, um, later so more towards the, the the bottom dead center in order to get uh, uh, a sufficient combustion air that we do uh, with the help of um, a fairly uh, uh, simple valve time variable valve timing system which you see here we have a um, arm uh, which uh, holds the cam roller and the arm is on eccentric shaft here you see so we uh, we turn the shaft and then we turn the, the valve timings and um, this enables us to to run uh, run uh, also higher torque, higher brake mean effective pressure uh, on uh, uh, low engine speeds. Uh, so um, so we increase uh, efficiency there, and we keep uh, smoke capacity uh, down. So um, or uh, yeah, so um, that's uh, variable valve timing. So. Um, here's uh, one of our um, uh, reference vessels. This is uh, the factory trawler Holme. It's the first vessel um, uh, with a B3345 engine. And the very first one we made, it was uh, delivered in 2015 and the uh, sea trial was in February 2016. So since then it's, it has run over 30,000 running hours. And that is, uh, it has actually run over 85% of the total calendar time since uh, the since sea trial. So, um, and um, we have uh, followed it uh, very closely with uh, from the development department here in Bergen, and uh, our experience is uh, is very good with this um, engine. Um, and um, as a show of confidence, um, as I interpret it, uh, the customer has also um, uh, ordered the first B3345 V12 engine that we have made for another vessel uh, in his uh, fleet. So um, uh, we are very satisfied with, uh, with the product we made here. So this is a um, uh, general spec of the engine. Uh, as I said, we have focused on fuel uh, efficiency, and uh, we are also satisfied with the performance we've uh, we've uh, come down to here. And um, just to say, th this is definitely the worst case scenario in terms of fuel efficiency. Um, we have uh, we have a good experience on our production test bed, and especially the V12 engine uh, is is very promising in terms of. Uh, fuel efficiency and, and goes uh, well below this uh, this value. So um, with that, I'll leave, um, pass the word to, to my colleague, uh, Doug. Hello, my name is uh, Doug Brandal. I'm general manager for uh, the PM product the PM Tunnel Thruster and the PM Osmuth. I'm located in uh, Ulstavik, a nice place on the west coast of Norway. Uh, we started the PM uh, product development uh, early 2000. We started to design, build and test a 50 kilowatt uh, unit. The test turned out to be successful and we continue with the uh, 800 kilowatt technology demonstrator that we built and installed in the anchor handler Olympic Octopus in, uh, in the period between 2006 and 2009. This uh, first type had the shaftless uh, design with the bearing arrangement ar around uh, the uh, circumferential diameter on the rotor. Uh, in 2010, we entered more into the industrialization uh, phase uh, for this product. 
we looked into the uh, full scale uh, experience we had and uh, the tests we have done and we ended up redesigning the uh, the product with a central shaft solution where we moved the bearing from the outer rim and into the uh, central shaft we also uh, did uh, several iteration on the hydronomic performance uh, and uh, and improvement in that area in addition, we looked into the supply chain and the assembly uh, process to, to reduce cost and make it more efficient for uh, serial production. The first unit we built, we installed in Olympic Octopus in 2012. Uh, in parallel, we also developed the PM awesome thruster. And uh, the first unit of, uh, two units of that one was installed in the research vessel Guneris in 2015. If you look into the uh, permanent magnet thruster family we have today, we have the US L drive and the OSPL L drive with a vertical mounted PM motor on top of the inboard part. We have the PM awesome thruster where the uh, PM motor is embedded in the nozzle. The PM tunnel thruster, the PM motor is uh, located inside the tunnel. And the last contribution is the, the elegance pod where we have the PM motor in the, in the pod. The elegance pod comes in a pushing and pulling version. If you look at the key benefits of our PM uh, tunnel thruster, the symmetrical design will give you equal thrust in both directions. Also the reduced building length will, uh, will uh, help you have a more optimal integration into the hull. And in many cases, you can move the uh, thruster uh, more uh, forward to the bow or off to the stern. If you look at the right hand side, uh, you can also see that uh, the space we are saving in the thruster room is, uh, is quite uh, significant. What is not so obvious in this, uh, this uh, figure is that the thruster itself is actually uh, uh, cooled by the natural water flow through the tunnel and thruster. So no uh, additional accessories like hydraulic power pack, uh, pumps and cooler is required. If we look at the PM Osmet awesome key feature. On the PM Osmet awesome we have less uh, rotating part, less wear parts compared to our mechanical uh, awesome thruster. As we see on the left hand side, you have the dry motor, the shaft coupling, top gear with uh, the hydraulic, uh, cooler pumps, etc. That you don't need on a, a PM awesome. Uh, the, uh, we replace the top gear with a slip ring solution. So it's a more simplified uh, design and a robust design. Uh, on the first uh, vessel we installed, the PM Osmet, we did uh, two identical uh, sea trial with uh, two identical measurement program. Uh, first one we did uh, prior to removing the existing shaft line system. At the bottom uh, left is uh, shown in the photo there. Uh, the second one we, we did after uh, uh, reinstalled the uh, the uh, uh, PM Osmet. And as we can see from the uh, figure below, the efficiency increase uh, showed on the measurement is up to 13%, depending on the ship speed. We also did underwater noise measurement, and at a silent condition of eight knots, we saw that the thruster installation fulfilled the silent R notation, which is uh, quite a strict uh, notation up to a frequency of 2,500. Uh, above 2,500 uh, drive frequency are the dominating frequencies. So we believe that by, by, uh, by uh, uh, looking into the drive configuration, we can reduce the, the noise level even further. The system also fulfilled the DMV comfort uh, V2 class, which is structural bore noise requirement. 
We have also compared the noise signature from tunnel thruster concepts and compared them towards the, the PM tunnel thruster. And as we can see from the figure below, the two uppermost curves, the red and the, the purple one, is two conventional tunnel thruster. Then we have the orange-brown one, which is a super silent thruster. And the bottom green is the PMTT1600. As we can see, the, uh, the uh, gap between the, the conventional thruster and the, the PMTT is quite significant, and even the super silent is, uh, is a big gap. Uh, what worth mentioning when it comes to tunnel thruster is that uh, the noise signature from a tunnel thruster installation is very dependent on how you integrate it into the hull. So special care has to be taken uh, on that one. Uh, where we have uh, PM tunnel thruster today, we have it in offshore vessel, yachts and exploration vessel. PM Asimut is installed in a research vessel and in two multifunctional workboats for Kystverken. Are the, uh, the PM technology and the PM TT and PM Asimut uh, adaptable for the fishing fleet? Yes, we believe they are. We uh, believe the product is, will fit very well into a fishing vessel, but the challenge up to today have been that the cost level have been too high. This is related to the fact that this is a new technology and that uh, we need a time to, to actually get the cost level down. We have done a lot on, in that area, not only on the product, but also in uh, looking into how it's integrated in the, in the hull and how much accessories we need to support the product. So at the end of the day, uh, installing PM technology into a fishing boat uh, will lead to reduced fuel consumption. Uh, noise and vibration will be uh, uh, on the upper class. And, and uh, the, um, the installation and maintenance of uh, the equipment will be reduced, which will also re reduce the life cycle cost. Uh, we will continue uh, developing the range on the boat on the PM Tunnel Trust and the PM Asimut. We have a high focus on customer requirement and customer need. Uh, it will comply with the new uh, US class rules and also the uh, environmental requirement we see is coming now. Uh, so if we sum up, yes, we think we have managed to, uh, to get uh, the investment cost uh, down on the product to an acceptable level. We have done a lot to reduce the installation time for the yard and also the maintenance time for the, and cost for the, the owner by removing uh, unnecessary accessories. And uh, these, uh, these uh, accessories will also require, normally require uh, power consumption and energy during the operation. And all in all, if you look at the system uh, with the PM, uh, PM products in a fishing boat, we think the, uh, in the lifetime perspective, it will be uh, competitive. That was everything from me. So thank you very much for listening. And I will hand over to uh, Trond. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dag, and also thank you very much to the other two presenters, uh, Isak and uh, Leif. Uh, it was uh, very interesting, at least for me, even more interesting yesterday when I heard it for the first time, but still very good uh, today. Uh, we then have a little bit of uh, time for uh, some of the questions uh, coming in uh, on their ways. Unfortunately, we were not able to answer them as we went, uh, as it seems we are better in sh ship technology than we are in IT uh, technology and some small issues from, uh, from my side, but I will try to answer some of the things that have been uh, coming in. 
I'm just gonna take control of this one again. Uh, yeah, I can take the first question. It's from uh, Amir. First, special thanks to all of the four presenters uh, regarding Costa Bulb and Hubcap. Their main role uh, uh, are their main roles in preventing cavitation. Do you consider a number of blades and propeller geometric profile uh, in reducing pressure pulses? Uh, when we are designing uh, all our propulsion system, this is of course, uh, as uh, Leif mentioned, a trade-off between uh, various things, always in very close cooperation with the uh, with the customer and the designers, for uh, and, and try to find optimum uh, solution for that particular uh, vessels. Of course, number of blades and these things also come into uh, to account together with uh, with other things. If you want to expand on that, uh, Leif, then you might be able to type an answer in the Q&A uh, section. Uh, there was also a question earlier on about the propeller uh, cap and the possibility to, uh, to change this. Uh, it is uh, not welded, but it's bolted. Uh, I don't know exactly how easy it is, but we have done changes of the propeller cap uh, underwater. Uh, we might be able to send some more information on uh, on email to uh, reg regarding this. Uh, the Ante Holmey was built at Freire shipyard uh, from Jose. That is, of course, uh, correct, and I know you would uh, you would know that. Um, Mr. Augustin, uh, my aunts uh, asked if we could comment on some persainers too. Uh, maybe uh, most of the examples today were from uh, from trawlers, and I would say that the uh, Kongsberg typically have uh, experience from the, the, the larger, more advanced uh, vessels. But of course, all of the technology and the uh, Pruma system and everything else is also applicable for Pusainers. You can also see the the picture chosen for the the Q and A section. Uh, Mr. Torger Torgersen is asking if there's a minimum size for uh, propeller rudder for the Prumas and uh, an Innoduct. Uh, if somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, as far as I know, there is no limitation from our side uh, and all of the systems that, or all of the propeller uh, systems that we have typically delivered can be fitted with, uh, with the Prumas uh, solution as well. Uh, for op uh, there's a question uh, from uh, Amir. Uh, for optimizing in both trawling and cruise speed, can variable pitch propellers be used too? Uh, of course, that is uh, very typically used. We offer both uh, solutions. As I said, this is always uh, a trade-off between uh, various things. And uh, CPP uh, propellers is uh, is very commonly used from uh, from our side, uh, and gives more flexibility. Uh, a question from Mohit: uh, In case we need to install this engine on conventional ship like offshore vessel, uh, will we get the same efficiency, or is it designed only for? Uh, fishery and trawler. No, the engine is definitely not uh, specially engineered for, uh, for a fishing vessel. I think historically uh, Bergen engine and, uh, and Rolls-Royce is much more known on the, on the offshore uh, industry. Um, unless you want to vein on something here, Isaac, I think we can just say that uh, you will find more Bergen engine uh, engines on uh, offshore vessel than you will find on uh, on trawlers. Uh, a lot of the fishing vessels uh, might actually be too small and have less power requirement than, uh, than the engines that we uh, offer and many of the uh, fishing vessels we also uh, see the use of our sea engine which is at least a little bit smaller. Uh, another one from uh, Turgeir. Uh, when will the PM azimut be delivered as a, as a redundant unit? Uh, an example, one unit with redundant windings, uh, so it can comply with the take me home requirements. Dag Brandal, maybe you want to unmute and can uh, weigh in on that. 
Yes. Um, this is uh, something we are discussing uh, with DNV, how we can uh, actually uh, uh, fulfill their requirement with respect to a single installation. So, so hopefully uh, within uh, not too long, we, we, we can have a, a concept or a solution uh, ready for this also. Thank you very much. Uh, from Jose, is there any campaign in KM to investigate the possibility of PM asymmetrists to meet strict silent R uh, notation? Uh, I'm thinking on research uh, vessels. Uh, I think I can see why you're asking the question and we have ongoing uh, projects. We have a lot of uh, documentation support showing and case studies with actual measurements from vessels with uh, uh, at least with AC pool uh, configurations uh, that do comply with uh, with silent R notation on some uh, research projects currently being built in uh, in China. For the AC trusters, uh, I don't have any personal experience with them and silent R uh, notation, but we can check up and get a little bit back to you regarding that, and also provide some data on the. On the silent notation testing that we have done with at least with the AC pool uh, version. Uh, then there is one from uh, Hamid. Uh, first of all, thank you to Kongsberg and their lecturer. I saw that the fuel injection system is easy adaptable to hybrid engine. I want to know if it can be done with an LNG hybrid, uh, LNG hybrid engine. And do you know? Do you have a uh, social injector and nozzle for such fuel. Uh, maybe Isak uh, can comment uh, a little bit. Uh, as it is now, Kongsberg do not have LNG hybrid uh, or dual fuel uh, engines. I'm not sure if you're talking about dual fuel or uh, hybrid with uh, battery and, uh, and propulsion. Um, Kongsberg or sorry, Bergen engine have been uh, very early on with the pure LNG uh, engines and have uh, a very good design for that. The B34, is it correct, Isaac? Uh, no, we, ha we have uh, a gas version of the B33. It's the B3645 engine yeah. and also the C26 uh, version of the, the C engine. And, uh, but uh, we do not have any uh, any injectors uh, for uh, for uh, gaseous fuel. No, um, we uh, we have a different fuel system on our our pure gas engines. So, yeah, the, the gas engines are also designed uh, from the as simple as possible um, uh, strategy, and uh, we have uh, the limited uh, electronics on that engine also. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we are, uh, I am now have uh, one minute left and then it uh, is very good to answer the question from uh, Angus. How do I con contact you and your uh, colleagues? Uh, my email address is, uh, is written down here on the last side. Uh, everybody will also get uh, an email after this uh, seminar. Uh, with a small survey, we would appreciate it very much if you could uh, take the time to, uh, to answer it. It will come from my email address if I understood it correctly. So then if you want to get in touch with us, just to reply to that email and uh, I will guide you on to, the, to whomever you can answer your, uh, your question. Uh, with that, uh, the remaining questions, I think we will just uh, have to write you a short uh, email message back uh, later because now I've used uh, all of my time and our thank you to our dear producers, but they were very strict that I could not go over time today. So I think we will just uh, leave it at that. Thank you very much for uh, joining us and attending. Hopefully you found it uh, interesting. And please contact us if you want to set up a meeting or, uh, or discuss further any of the topics that have been out there today. Thank you very much for today.